On today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, it is a Fairbanks Friday edition of the show where Nick Fairbanks will be joining me to break down the Florida Panthers' 3-0 win against the Carolina Hurricanes where Spencer Knight was spectacular. We are also going to be discussing the roster moves as three players have been sent down to AHL Charlotte for the Cats. And we are going to preview Saturday's matinee game between the Florida Panthers and Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. All on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Friday, November 11th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're to your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And don't forget to follow the new show on the Locked On Podcast Network, Locked On NHL Prospects, along with the other shows on the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked on NHL and locked on fantasy hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden. So, Cats fans, what a game that was on Wednesday night for the Florida Panthers. As I mean, you could have looked at all the circumstances for the Panthers on Wednesday against the Carolina Hurricanes. Second game of a suspension for Matthew Kachuk. <laughs> Patrick Hornquist still missing and likely not playing on Saturday against the Edmonton Oilers. And of course, Aaron Eckblad missing, and we'll get to Aaron Eckblad later in the show. And of course, er him missing in this one uh, against a Stanley Cup uh, and an Eastern Conference uh, contender in the Carolina Hurricanes. But man, what a game. And this will be a perfect time to bring in my guest on the show. It is a Fairbanks Friday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, Nick Fairbanks. Nick, welcome to the show, and what a game that was on Wednesday night for the Cats. Thank you for having me back, Armando, and uh can honestly say that's the first 60-minute game I've seen in a very long time from start to finish. Uh Team came out with energy, came out and played the muscle game, played the dirty game, and uh, they were rewarded with it uh, with a 3 nothing win over the uh, some think Stanley Cup favorite uh, outside of the Colorado Avalanche, the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, and we, we've we spoken about so many times this season with the Cats, how they, like you said, you said it best, 60-minute game. And we've seen a little bit of stretches where even when the Panthers would have a, a lead, whether it's one goal or two even, we'd see a, a little bit of a stretch of time where the Florida Panthers would just – uh, be a little bit lackadaisical and then give up like two goals in like a 32 minute and a half span with this Panthers team. But we didn't even see, we didn't even really see much of, of that stretch, even for scoring chances for the opposition, as far as, as, as far as the Panthers, they were eliminating on, on man rushes uh, for the care for the Carolina hurricanes on Wednesday night. And, and you saw that every single period in Wednesday's game had at least one person who was noticeable for a big stretch uh, of the game. I mean, let's start with the first period for the Panthers. I mean, Alexi Hepaniemi, a call up for the, the Cats from a, after everything that happened with Patrick Hornquist on Thursday against the the Sharks, uh, and one of the one of the best uh, peers that I've seen Alexi Hepaniemi play. He gets an opportunity he gets a pass to Rudolph Balsters who gets like a spinorama chance on anti Ranta. And then right on the neutral zone, everybody's eyes are focused on Alexi Hepaniemi. He gets another pass to Rudolph Balsters and he goes in on, on a rush. I mean, Colin White, uh, 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 even though he's playing on a different line, he was, uh, he create he made a stop on a rush as well with his back check, Alexander Barkov getting a power play goal. Of course, all three of his goals coming on the power play. And I was just looking up on hockey reference as well, that, Barkov has a hundred more faceoff wins than the next ne next person on on the team 
for the Panthers mm-hmm. as well. So just so many different individual performances as well. And of course, to top it off, Spencer Knight uh, is facing eight, 18 shots in the first two periods and then, excuse me, uh, facing 22 shots in the first two periods and then 18 the rest of the way. And then just making sure that the Florida Panthers were were not going, he was not going to even make this game close. He was hugging the post, tracking pucks well, rebound control was there. Brandon Montour, especially in front of the net as well, um, making sure that there wasn't any clean, um, cleanup attempts for Carolina. So overall, just outstanding game for this Florida Panthers team. Full 60 minutes, like you said. Definitely. And uh, Alexei Hepanayami has been noticeable for the last two games that he's played for Florida. I mean, the first game he played, he got an assist. And then in this game, you just saw him be able to move the puck and uh, play that uh, grinder game that, you know, he's not a big guy or anything, but, um, you know, it, you love to see a kid coming in like that and actually trying to, you know, make his mark on a game. And he definitely helped out in that first period to kind of show what Florida was all about. Um, and then, you know, as you were saying, Alexander Barkov, you know, it's kind of frustrating this uh, season just because he's had a slow start. He normally is a slow starter, but I think um, some things that have happened in the off season uh, kind of affected his play and more is expected of him now that, uh, you know, uh, he, He's had a little bit, you know, of a rougher start. Um, you know, it, it is kind of amazing that all three of his goals have been on the power play. I just wish it would be more often. But, um, you know, well, hopefully this will open up the floodgates for him. And then, you know, as you were saying, uh, Spencer Knight, um, really solid in goal last night. I don't feel like there was one point during the game where I felt like, you know, hey, you know, he, he's under siege that he's not going to get this or, you know, the team's got to help him out. Um the team did a really good job in front of them though. Like, you know, they were blocking the passing lanes. They weren't allowing a lot of shots through a lot of block shots, which in previous seasons, you weren't seeing a lot of, a lot of shots were getting through. And those were the shots that unfortunately were either getting tipped or going in the back of the net. So a very good adjustment um, by the defensive core and also the scheme that Paul Maurice is putting in. Yeah. And the only uh, big mistake that Spencer Knight really made in, in that whole game was when, when he played the puck in the trapezoid and then almost uh, <laughs> gave uh, Martin Nook an opportunity on him. So that w- when that is really your only big mistake of the game and you mm-hmm. still come up with a save on that, that's how you know that you've had a, a great performance for, for this team. And then of course, with the shutout as well, another a, a consecutive game in the row, um, in a row that the Florida Panthers do not give up, uh, a goal on on the PK as well. So encouraging sign for this Panthers team as well. Uh, we were talking about pre-recording how the Panthers uh saw something earlier today about how this team has gone through the first fourteen games as the easiest strength of schedule. So I mean. A six oh seven points percentage for for this team, still second in the in the NHL after some of the results that we've had we've seen tonight. Of course, with Buffalo dropping um once again, Detroit uh losing to New York as well. Panthers are still in a very 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 great position to to still uh to still build off this, and of course they're getting healthy at the right time. Of course that's a that's a thing we'll continue uh talking in segment number two. But I mean mm-hmm. Spencer Knight starting two games in a row, Nick. I mean. The the numbers Give them three. Th- it, it might be three. It just might be three for 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 the for the Panthers. Um, g- I know I, this might be too early to ask, but we'll ask it anyway. Uh, <laughs> is, is 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 Spencer Knight the is Spencer Knight the number one starter for the Cats? So I'll preface this in saying that we talked about this during the offseason that, you know, if Bob starts off slower, if he's not playing up to the get par that he played last season, that it's very a good chance that Spencer Knight could take over. And, you know, outside of the first week, Bob has been mediocre. There's been some goals, again, that he's letting in that shouldn't be going in, things that, you know, remind us of maybe two or three years ago when he first signed the contract. Um, But Spencer's coming in. He's been solid every single game. um, And he's making the stops that need to happen. Um, He's not allowing um, the team or the opposing teams to get – a lot of uh, momentum going, if anything, he's shutting them down and, you know, getting faceoffs. Um, and Bob's not, Bob's getting, you know, he, he's making some great saves. He's making some timely saves, but the problem is, is that he's letting one too many of those chances go through. And, you know, it, it's one thing that I think about sometimes where does Florida want to play defense in front of their star goalie or do they expect him to bail them out every time? That's one question I have. And then you have Spencer where it feels like that they're trying to protect the house and they're trying to take care of him. And he looks fantastic. 
-hmm. So you really have to kind of wonder, you know, like, what, what is it? Is it a mentality thing with the team, you know, trusting Bob and saying, Hey, he's the guy he's $10 million Bob, but you know, with Spencer, he's still young and, you know, he's still got to get his stripes. Um, I don't know what it is, but to kind of answer your question, you know, fully, I think if he wins, if he starts on Saturday and he wins, yes, he's going to be the starter. I think Bob will ride the bench and Florida needs to really start honing in on what they're going to have with him this season because he signed that contract extension. Okay. They need to know what he had, what they have in him. And then secondly, they need to know what they're going to, you know, put him in going forward. Is he going to be able to take it? And, you know, is he going to carry them to the promised land? Do they need to know if he can take that workload and also take that pressure? Yeah, because as, as you grow, as you grow in this league, you're, of course, your reps are going to go up. We're expecting somewhere close to 50, 50, as far as, as far as these two, as, as the later years get get going. And I mean, we, we look at games started even even now where we are at the season. I mean, Bob has started eight. Spencer Knight has started six. The numbers for Spencer Knight are are better. The uh, even though the even though goalie wins isn't really something that I like to refer to as well. I mean, winning percentages as well is better with with mm-hmm. Spencer Knight starting as of now. I mean that it, it's it's right it's right here in front of me. I can't I can't deny it neither for 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 this team. And, and, and it really goes, goes back to your point is it, is the team, uh, is the team using, using when, when Spencer Knight is in, are, are, are they, are they more tight to the vest, uh, in in their own zone around him as well? So that's something we got to consider. And you said, if he starts on Saturday, um, correct. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he does, but of course you, 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 with with uh you don't want to be you don't want to have a 10 million dollar bench warmer on your team uh that's for sure especially when his uh he still has a no move clause this coming summer but of course it's a results oriented business in, in this in this uh league and if Paul mm-hmm. Maurice clearly sees that Spencer Knight is the guy uh so so be it um uh, it's uh it's kind of like strapping <laughs> strapping his hand um forcing his hand in in that in that situation so I, I think I think one one more game and it's going to be a hard one for for Spencer Knight if he if he does end up being the starter for for Saturday and luckily luckily if Bob whether Bob starts or not Saturday mm-hmm. he'll have a good amount of rest and that's and that's a good part of uh, for for this team getting veteran rest and this is a good stretch of the season where you where two days two, one game two days off one game two days off so I think it's that the schedule has a little bit uh to do with it as well and i think paul maurice is giving also take using this as a time to take advantage of of that as well in giving uh in giving uh sergey bobrovsky a little rest as well so maybe that's uh something that goes into it but uh we are going to discuss some of the roster moves for the panthers and and something that we've been anticipating heading into saturday's game against the edmonton oilers but first we're going to tell you all about bet online and BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get all of the latest odds, trends, and every professional amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer, esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to getting your fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Second segment here on this Friday, November 11th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Uh, would like to wish everybody a uh, happy Veterans Day out there uh, for everybody who celebrates. Uh, and don't forget to also subscribe to Locked On NHL, where every single night we will be, during, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving you Locked On game to game. It is daily recaps on every NHL game from the local experts on the Locked On Podcast Network. You can catch game to game on the Locked On NHL podcast feed and on YouTube. So, Nick, a few roster moves happened for the Florida Panthers today. Um, and this was something we were expecting for at least a good week now when Paul Maurice uh, was talking to the media and mm-hmm. talking about how when the expected date that Aaron Eckblad was going to be returning. And of course, the very first game of eligibility for LTR IR for Aaron Eckblad 
Saturday against Edmonton. That was always the target day ever since he was uh, placed on there. And very encouraging that the very first day of eligibility, he he's back. But of course, mm. the like like I talked about with Jacob on Wednesday, the issues don't go away when it comes to the cap. Uh, roster moves for for the Panthers. Uh, Lucas Carlson has been sent down to Charlotte. Matt Kirstead and and Alexi Um three players who are waivers exempt. So you take the easy route for for Bill Zito if if you're him. Okay, you're not at risk of losing these guys. So the, the these guys are going to be sent down. Like like we talked about Wednesday, somebody has got to somebody has got to go through waivers. Uh, you got to put at least one player through waivers uh, because there's still about four hundred thousand for for the Panthers that they are above the eighty five point five. Uh, so there's three. We I already basically <laughs> said who was going to be the guy who was going to be placed on waivers, but I'm going to ask you, Nick Fairbanks. Uh, who do you think is going to be the guy who will be placed on waivers uh, to bring Aaron Ackblad back? Can it be Mark Stahl, please? <laughs> um, uh, they have I, five I, defensemen I, on the roster, yeah. so I don't think it's going to be Mark Stahl. No, it will not. I mean, one can dream right now. Um, you know, he, he had a solid game last night. I mean, you know, he only, you know, had one or two turnovers. But um, other than that, um, you really got to start thinking, uh, you know, who, who's been in and out of the lineup and everything. And, um, you know, I, I, I just wonder if, um, you know, somebody like Colin White, possibly. Um, I know he was on the first line with Barkoff and everything, and now Matthew Chuck's coming back in the lineup. Um, so where does that leave him? Um, and just newly signed Eric Stahl. Um, you know, I know that's Maurice's guy and everything but like that, but, you know, at the same time, you know, um, what's he doing for the team besides winning faceoffs right now? Is he generating offense? Is he creating defense? Or is he getting him down in the defensive zone every time he's on the ice? So those are things you got you got to kind of think about and um, clean up. So um, yeah, those would probably be my two. Yeah, and I I, I think about I, I I think about Colin White. I think I think based on his start with playing with Anton Lundell and Etulu Sturain, and I I think that his start. To, to the season has just been so incredible that I don't think Colin White is the guy who's going to be mm-hmm. uh, is going to be on, on waivers. But of course, spoke about Nick Cousins and of course, uh, Eric Stahl for for the Panthers. And I actually compared uh, two uh, statistically uh, for 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 both uh, to see what would be a better case for who. All right. So worst Corsi four percentage. Uh, Eric mm-hmm. Stahl has the worst Corsi four percentage. Yep. Goals four per 60 minutes. Eric Stahl's worse. Goals against per 60 minutes. Stahl is worse. Mm-hmm. Plus minus, they're about the same at minus three. Face-off percentage, who's worse? Cousins. So yeah. basically, uh, but ba- but Nick Cousins, ever since coming back into the lineup with the injury to Patrick Hornquist, uh, he hasn't been uh, at center. So he's not getting those face-off opportunities like Eric Stahl is. He's doing great in the dot, but... Faceoffs isn't the be all end all when it comes to when it comes to hockey. Of course, the possession game is of course the more more important part. And the Corsi four for for Eric Stahl, it's like it's 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 not good. It's uh it said a uh, minus twenty relative uh Corsi four percentage in, in that. So I I th- I I think statistically it should be Eric Stahl, but if if we're going of who Maurice trusts, I think we're I think we're likely going to see uh Nick Cousins, but. I won't agree with it. I, I I know that's for sure, but uh, but I think I think if if I were the coach, if I were the GM, I I I I'd, I'd unfortunately had to choose the I I would choose the future Hall of Famer, unfortunately. Yeah, and you know they kept him around for a reason. I I, I had a feeling that they kind of knew that there was going to be an injury or something was going to happen, so they kept him around. Maurice trusts him and everything, but you know at the same time, you're you're the head coach. You got to make uh, the decision bet for what's best for the team, and I know Eric's been to the Stanley Cup and he's won a cup and everything, but you know his best days are you know past him, and you know if Nick Cousins gives you a better chance to win and gives you a better overall game to help out the team, then you got to make that decision. Um, if Eric's just winning faceoffs like you know what we were just talking about, that's great, but at the same time. He's just not getting it done on both sides of the ice. He's not scoring. Uh, he's getting hemmed down in the defensive zone, and he's, you know, unfortunately giving up uh, a lot of scoring chances right now. And um, I just think that's something that the Panthers need to limit, um, especially if they're trying to really uh, hone in on their defensive uh, mindset that, you know, Paul Maurice has installed. 
Yeah, and and and, and you got to think about it from Wednesday night, even that uh, that the Nick Cousins line they were super aggressive on the forecheck and and uh, playing playing tic tac toe in their own zone that uh, that yep. that the Carolina Hurricanes lost Nick Cousins and just got through the defense and and was there for a rebound opportunity to like clean it up. So uh, definitely, de- definitely uh, Nick Cousins is very well aware that his roster spot uh, is up with with Aaron Eckblad coming coming back and of course as soon as that eric stall signing i i think he was uh kind of uh uh put on notice definitely and you know it, it's unfortunate that you know that when he was playing with lundell um and lose to ryan and that i wish maurice would have known or at least he said he watched the tape from last season or he's watching the games maybe start reinhardt with lundell and cousins you know like that would have been a perfect line for me. You know, Lundell is the guy who's going to, you know, back check and be able to create plays. And Reinhardt is going to be able to pass or even shoot. And then you have Cousins, the guy who's going to get down and dirty and try to win puck battles for you. Um, you know, not to say that Luis Duran is not going to because he started the season very well. But I just don't think the mix and match was there. But, you know, you just you start to wonder, like, how, what the line combinations are going to look like and how Maurice is putting this team together. And it just doesn't seem like, to me, that, you know, stall really fits what we're trying to do. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I think he's just a filler right now. And I just, you know, between you and me, and I know you feel the same, I I just hope Cousins isn't the one that gets waived. I think if Eric does get waived, he's not getting picked up by anybody. He'll still be um, with Florida or he'll go down to Charlotte. And he could be with his uh, other brother in uh, in Charlotte, Jared Stahl. So, hey, hey. I mean, he played in he played uh six uh AHL games uh la- last year uh for I the Iowa Wild right but but of course the purpose of of that was to eventually go to Beijing uh for uh the Olympics so uh so I mean Etta Lucerana has had an opportunity being in the top six of course with suspension to Matthew Kachuk Colin White moving up so I of course Kachuk is going to be back on that Barkoff line uh but who knows he could be very well back. Uh, on that on that Bennett line, which is I hope the long term, uh, the the long term for for the Panthers that he is going to continue going back to that Bennett line, and of course, mm-hmm. hey, who knows if Lusterinen uh has it cre- is a mainstay with Balsers now being going back to the fourth, and maybe Nick Cousins being being on being on that wing hopefully for 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 the Panthers. So, uh, it, it's it's just a lot of mixing and matching. Of course, the the luxury of this Panthers team is that they also have so many different players who could play wing and center. So, it, it's a it, it's it's kind of good problems to have that where that that the Florida Panthers find themselves in. It does, and thankfully we only have to deal with the season of this. I mean, could you imagine going season after season after season like you know uh, our friends from up north, the Toronto, and I mean not Toronto. Well, yeah, it is Toronto right now, but uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm sorry. Um, you know, that they have these issues year in and year out, but, you know, they seem like they use their LTIR every single season. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, going forward, you know, th- this will be a minor thing that they have to deal with. And hopefully it allows players to notice like, hey, listen, I have to bring my A game every single night in order to keep playing and also to make my mark on this team. So I think with how Florida played against Carolina, I think everybody minus maybe stall. Um, and that's Eric, um, probably deserves another game. And uh, if they play the same way they played Carolina against Edmonton, good results are going to come. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's a good segue to get us to the third and final segment of this Fairbanks Friday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. We'll be previewing Saturday's matinee matchup between the Florida Panthers and the Edmonton Oilers at FLA Live Arena. So stick with us. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Fairbanks Friday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Nick Fairbanks is back on the Friday edition of the show. So, uh, Nick, I was uh, pulling up, uh, of course, the, the Edmonton Oilers and how they were doing this season. Of course, they're uh, expected to 
to at least win the division in the Pacific. I mean, Vegas might have a little bit of something to say, but I was looking up, I saw a second in power play percentage. And of course, we're not surprised that the two leading point getters for the Edmonton Oilers are Leon Draisaitl, Connor McDavid, and their leading and the third best person as far as points in on the Edmonton Oilers is 10, 10 off of those two. So just yep. goes to show how much those two carry the team. But I mean, just looking at power play, uh, power play goals compared to the rest of their goals, just over. 31% for the for the Edmonton Oilers that of their goals come on the power play of their at least mm-hmm. this was the stats prior to their game against Carolina. I know I know that 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 just went final so the stats aren't updated on a uh, hockey reference but second in power play percentage in the NHL but 30th in PK percentage. Uh, mm-hmm. they are 8th in goals against but they are fifth most in shots against. So mm-hmm. what does that tell you? Defense is giving up a lot of odd man rushes. But if if you watch any Edmonton Oilers game this season and you see how fast paced they are, it uh ch- chances are chances are it's gonna you, we're gonna see a lot of uh similarities to last last year's game and of course maybe a little bit of last year's Florida Panthers with the fast paced run and gun style type of game that we could see in in this one uh especially with how fast uh paced the Oilers uh can be when they're in control definitely and um you know I I think Florida some Florida Panthers fans are I don't want to say most of them but a lot of Twitter Florida Panthers fans are not happy with the product on the ice right now. They say it's boring that the team is not exciting, um, you know, and they're just, they're not as good. They'd rather have the six, seven, or, you know, the Mambo five goals, you know, every single night. And that's great. It's exciting. Um, it gets everybody in a fervor. It, it got the team noticed and everything. It's not going to win you a title. It's not going to win you the Stanley cup. So understandably they're, they started slow. We predicted that. Um, and on top of that, you know, you, you got to create a new identity after that. You, you know, you kind of had to revamp yourself. So what does that mean for this game going into Edmonton? It's going to come down to special teams. All right. You have Florida who can't score on the power play. Let's be honest. Okay. Yeah, they've yeah. been a little bit better as of late. A little bit. I mean, a little is by a stretch. <laughs> and then you have Edmonton coming in, you know, at 31%. So is Florida going to play a disciplined game like they did against Carolina, or are they going to take a lot of stupid penalties and allow Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl do what they do best? Um, that will be, to me, uh, showing exactly where they're at in their maturity or at least where they're at um, in the development of this scheme. Or if they decide to take a night off and be like, listen, let, let's play this run and gun game. Let's, let's have some fun and let's get the fans into it. Yeah, and and talk about how we how we saw this team just eliminate zone entries against the against the Carolina Hurricanes. I know the Carolina Hurricanes aren't aren't the best offensive uh team in the NHL. They're but they're, they're fast. more but they're fast. So it and I mean in their game against the Carolina Hurricanes, Edmonton, uh, which was j- just uh last night. I mean mm-hmm. the Oilers were held to only twenty two shots on goal. I mean I mean. I'm, of course, matchups between what Carolina matches up against Edmonton are, is a little different than what Florida can offer, obviously. But, I mean, the 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 secret sauce is, of course, special teams. And, of course, uh, goaltending. Uh, let, let's talk about yep. a little bit of goaltending for the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, Jack Campbell was uh, signed to that long-term uh, contract, a five-year contract, about a little north of $5 million, something that Toronto wasn't going to offer up offer him and of course we had a lot to say about mike smith uh last year F- 40 year old mike smith of course ltir probably never going to play hockey again get get a younger yep. guy probably someone who was maybe in the vesna conversation very early on last season but still what what's the common denominator still with the edmonton oilers is that their their defense gives up too many chances up front and their goalies just can't clean it up so it seems like that it's a continued recycling issue for this Edmonton Oilers team. It definitely is. And it's just, you know, they want to play the run and gun. They want to play fast and they want to score on the rush. And 
Florida knows all about that. That's how they score most of their goals, or that's how they scored most of their goals last season is definitely on the rush. Um, and, you know, if, if Florida wants to win this game and they want to win it decisively, then they're going to have to play a really good structured defensive game. They're going to have to clog the neutral zone. And then secondly, they're going to have to contest every single puck that is entered into the offensive zone, um, you know, into Edmonton's offensive zone. So, um, and really start pressuring those uh, defensemen from the Oilers. They're not that good, to be honest. I mean, when you pay Darnell Nurse $9 million, that shows that you really, like, you, you didn't have anybody else to bring in. Like, you needed to overpay this guy. And, um, you know, Duncan Keith didn't want to stick around, so he decided to retire. Um, I think you still have Tyson Berry that's still there. He, he's mm -hmm. kind of an offensive defenseman, and he never plays defense, really. Um, and that goes back to his Toronto days. So, I don't know. It just it just seems like Toronto gets these I mean uh Edmonton gets these names and they don't change their culture. Like they don't change the way that they play and yet they still feel like they're going to be a cup contender. Now, I'll give it to them. They made the conference finals last year, did they not? Mhm. Mm but what let them down? Goaltending. Correct. So, the fact is that they thought that they could pay Jack Campbell what they did and they're still getting the same results. Maybe it's not 100% on the goaltending. Maybe it's something else. So um, until they figure that out, uh, McDavid's still going to get his hardware, but he's not, he's not going to be raising the cup anytime soon. Yeah, and, you feel, and you feel bad for someone like that because if there's anyone who I want to see uh, win, I, I, of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, fan bases out there who, of course, don't want to see McDavid win. Of course, <laughs> the, it, it's funny. People, people might wins. ask. People might ask uh, Canadian uh, t um, Canadians who live there if they are actually rooting for other Canadian teams to win a cup that's not their team. And a lot of them will tell them, hell no, no, <laughs> it, we it, they want their they want their teams to be the one that that breaks that drought since 1993. So so but me as a as a as a Panthers fan, as far as as far as people who I think just deserves to win so much but just doesn't get any help and of course he he he's the he's the highest paid player well until Nathan McKinnon's uh, contract kicks in next year and mm -hmm. des deserves every single one of those dollars but man of course the, the, it takes up a lot of the cap hit of course with him and Dreisaitl and and just re still really hard for them to of course build a winner but hey hopefully with the with the cap going up uh the the Edmonton Oilers can still find a way to just build around those two because uh because they those guys are locked up at least for the next uh few years. I, I mean I know Dry is gonna be up for a contract very soon and he's gonna get uh his payday. I don't know if his contract uh goes uh over what Austin Matthews' new contract will be. But hey, uh it, it's gonna it's you, there's a lot of decisions for the Edmonton Oilers uh definitely to make as far as uh uh their their future as well. So I mean Jay Woodcroft stuck around for another season. Ken Holland fired his first coach in season la last um last season for the first time ever. So mm -hmm. lot 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 of a uh, lot of questions still as uh, until until they actually reach the Stanley Cup final and that uh, they actually you know ho hoist it. There the the pressure will always the spotlight and the pressure will always be on Con Connor McDavid. I mean we saw it with Alexander Ovechkin recently. Even though even though Sidney Crosby won early in his career. Um, we, we, we saw a little bit of that, that spotlight on, on Sidney Crosby to, as far as the pressure to win, but, and Connor McDavid mm -hmm. is currently in that, uh, position right now. Um, Nick, uh, any parting words before we, uh, wrap up this, uh, Fairbanks Friday edition of the Lockdown Florida cast? Two things. Number one, like I said last time, relax. It's mm -hmm. going to be a process. It's okay that they're getting these things out of their system right now. They're figuring things out. It's okay. This boring hockey right now, it it needs to happen. They need to know how to play. So everybody, please relax, okay? Secondly, um, I will say that the new retro jerseys, I know we kind of talked about them preseason because they kind of like released them a little bit, a little bit. November 15th, get to FLA Live Arena. You will be able to get one in the pro shop and get it customized if you want it. They were sold out online, so if you want to get yours and be part of everything that's going on, get to FLA Live Arena on November 15th against the Capitals and get your jersey quickly. But 
other than that, you guys can find me on Twitter at Prudential Zero, and I uh, look forward to talking next week. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, uh, it'll be starting at two p.m. I um uh, for for the for the reverse retros as far as those going on sale, two to five p.m. at, at FLA Live Arena. Uh, yeah, I uh we were ha- the reason why we're bringing this up is because we had a conversation on our chat today because I tried uh looking up a uh, a jersey and um to no avail as far as that so big big announcement based on reverse retro jerseys on in-person purchases uh for that uh one more actually one more thing um okay does Aaron Eckblad um, play on power play one on Saturday I'm gonna yes. say no I'm gonna say no you you say gonna, yes I say yes because he's always the spark and he's always the one that is able to get a power play goal I think he's the catalyst now I, I think I know where you're going to go with this, so I'll let you have the floor with it. I just I think Florida needs that jump in the power play uh, sector, and if they're going to beat Edmonton, they're going to need that. Hmm. I'm going to say no because I think they're going to give him a like a game um game to like get acclimated again, and then mm-hmm. we'll see him back. But because they did the same thing with Brandon Montour when he missed a um a, a game or two, but this is this for Aaron Ekblad, he's missing weeks, so I'm going to say that mm-hmm. he at least the first game back he will not be on power play one. One, but I'd be more than happy to be wrong and see him uh, on the on the left side taking one timers again. That's for sure. But Nick, thank you <laughs> once again for for joining me on the show. Hopefully the the Panthers will pull out a win and that we could see uh, not only a health healthier team as the as the as a lot of uh, marquee players uh, come to town, including uh, including a former Panther uh, next Saturday, but we'll talk more about that next week. We'll still have one more episode uh, to record right before that special matchup for, (laughs) for the Florida Panthers, but thank you once again, and I'll see you next week. See you next week, Armando. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the locked on Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Make sure to subscribe to all the shows on the locked on NHL network, including locked on NHL, Locked on Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden, and the newest show on the Locked on NHL Network, Locked on NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked on Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure to listen to today's episode of Locked on Sports Today. Locked on Sports Today will give you a daily podcast covering the whole entire sports scene with daily interviews and the take of the day. Locked on Sports Today, your daily 20-minute or less podcast on all things sports. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Where's your team? Every day.